floor and they were caught in the storm. And back then they had some standing houses, so they didn't start to dance against strong winds. And in the lake, Okeechobee region, and the lake Okeechobee flooded, and the, the surge from the lake actually killed a lot of them. And later, latitude and longitude positions were also used. This, uh, at first, they listed storms by the latitude and longitude positions where, where they were first reported. This was cumbersome. For example, a storm like, and especially back then, they used Morse codes. So they had to translate everything in Morse codes. And a hurricane, like, they had to say hurricane 12.8 degrees north, latitude, and 54.7 degrees west longitude, which was difficult to remember. And it was difficult to basically give an idea, get an idea of where it was located. Um, and it also caused uh, confusion, especially if you had a storm within the same geographic location uh, as that of storm. And furthermore, this caused another significant problem because in 1940, when meteorologists began airborne studies of tropical cyclones, ships, aircraft, and aircraft communicated mainly in Morse codes. This was okay for letters of the alphabet, but it was very difficult and, and it's not going to be dealing with numbers because it was slow and caused confusion amongst users. And always, in the regions, uh, they were also called severe gales. Uh, like I said, most of them were known as severe gales. Equatorial storms or lying storms. And equatorial and lying storms were basically used in the Southern Caribbean because it, it was located close to the equator. And the land to, the, the land to refer to the time of the year and the location which these storms were referred to. Here. The first U.S. named storm, officially, unofficially named, was Hurricane George in 1947. And the second Hurricane unofficially named was Hurricane Bess, named after the Ospoken First Lady, Bess Truman, in 1949. The U.S. Army and Navy meteorologists working in the Pacific again named storms during World War II. When they often attract multiple storms, they gave each storm a single name in order to distinguish it more quickly than listing their position style. But why the start of naming, unofficially naming storms, especially during World War II, uh, two U.S. warships and kind of two uh, hurricanes, two major hurricanes in, in the Pacific, and it actually both of those about 700 persons died on one ship and about on the next ship, and it forced the government, the American government, to start finding ways to choose storms and one of storm was significantly. And the naming of hurricanes today, from 1950 to 1952. Military alphabet names were, were used. Abel, Baker, Shai, Dog, East, and that was adopted by the World Media Organization. Now, it posed a significant problem uh, because they realized that if you name a storm Abel at the military alphabet, uh, what happens if Abel did a significant amount of damage and you are in the climate? So, from 1950 to 1952, they just they, they got rid of they, they used the military alphabet name. And they started naming after women in 1953. And regular women used, and this lasted until 1978. 1953, Alice was the first real human named storm, beginning in 1964. So they, in 1960, they used four sets of lists. Today, we're now familiar with the success of this use now. But in 1960, they, uh, four sets were used, and it was close to the circle after four years. The list expanded to 10 sets in 1971 with four making changes. Once they changed it to a now from the six sets of men and women's names. In the North Atlantic, gender equality finally reached the naming of our by thousands of complaints written to the World Ecological Organization. And feminist groups in the USA, especially in the USA, who I urge the World Ecological Organization to add women names, add men names, sorry. And hence, both men, men and women names are used alternatively. And this practice has been used today. Since 1979, the list now includes names. And from 1979, they now include names that from countries such as Dutch and Spanish, which also have a large presence here in the Caribbean. So we have names that you're not familiar with. Either they are Dutch, Spanish, or French. And to that basically to reflect the different uh, ethnic languages of the various countries in the region. The practice of giving names to storms. And we also have some cases where these storms actually change names. Uh, the practice of giving name, different names to storms in different basins also led to a few rare studies where John Miriam, uh, Arabian John Miriam, uh, occurred in 1988. It went into the Atlantic, it came from the Atlantic, went over the Pacific, and it was renamed 
bringing after that storm. And Hurricane Joe was a powerful hurricane response and a destruction of a dozen countries in the Caribbean and Central America. And another hurricane is Hurricane Simone hit England. And which was a powerful category, five hurricanes which found in the Central America. America on Halloween during the 1961 North Atlantic Hurricane season. It caused $370 million in damages and killed about 275 persons. Actually, it, it came from the Atlantic, moved into the Pacific, and it moved back into the Atlantic, and they named it three times. It was the only storm that actually had three names in the record books, either here or anywhere in the region, anywhere around the world. Retiring storm. And it's interesting to note here first that lens Q, U, X, Y, and Z are not named, are not used in the North Atlantic because of the lack of names beginning with those letters. So if you look at the list of names of hurricanes, you'll notice that those letters are never proven. But if you notice in the Eastern Pacific or Western Pacific, there are a few of those letters that are used because their names are more prevalent than them. And when a hurricane causes tremendous amount of damage and death, the name is taken out of circulation and tried to reason up sensitively and replaced with the name of the same letter and of the same gender and it was the same language as the name being used. And this is something that maybe you might, and this is something that you might not know. Most people believe that when you have a hurricane, if it causes significant amount of damage and death, they automatically retire. That's not always, that's not always the case. And hurricane, when it has a major impact, uh, and the country affected, or the countries affected, at the end of the hurricane season, before they get up to the end, they have, they have a, a meeting in Foss in the region called Region 4. We have a meeting and they decide then to retire the storm. And, and by the prior to 1969, officially the uh, uh, retired name, basically you have to retire for 10 years. After 10 years, officially it could be used again. Um, but, uh, but today, the names are retired indefinitely and the gender names are, are, are selected in English, Dutch, Spanish, French, or for North Atlantic storm. Other than that, the, that, the names are recycled until it causes great devastation every six years. If a storm forms in the off season, and for example, if a storm forms in June to November, if a storm forms in December, it takes the list of the prior instances. It forms in January or February, it takes the list of the, the upcoming years, the list of names. And while the request for retirement is now being turned down, storms such as Hurricane Gordon, in 1994, which impacted us here in the Bahamas, uh, caused a great deal of their destruction, and nonetheless, it was not retired. Gordon killed 1,122 persons in Haiti, 22 deaths in other nations, and released on $400 million in damages in Haiti, and in, in the United States, $400 million. And damages in Haiti and Cuba were severe. And despite the tremendous amount of damage, the name Gordon was now retired. It was used six years later and was used about six years later other than that. Because the reason why is because Haiti, the, the government uh, country did not request retirement. If they don't request it, the world in the nation cannot retire the storm. They have to officially request the storm. And they also used the Greek alphabet. It's the first time the Greek alphabet was used during the hurricane season. Everyone knows about this. The 2005 hurricane season of 2000. The 2005 hurricane season. And whenever the list of names is exhausted, uh, they, they refer to the Greek alphabet. It's also the same in the Pacific as well, but the difference between the Pacific and the Atlantic, we have one set of lists. In the Pacific, they have two sets of lists, and rarely, very rarely that they, they exhaust all of those lists. Uh, but 2005 was a blimp year, and it, it created a big problem for the world being out of the education. Because back then, they did name hurricane, they did name them after the Greek alphabet in the there was three cases in the early 1970s. They named them, but they were not really tropical storms and they were they were subtropical storms and they didn't really name them uh, based on based on hurricanes. And it never occurred, in fact, it never even occurred to the, uh, the, you needed to name hurricanes after Greek alphabets. Uh, but what happened was that Alpha of 2005 causes a significant amount of damage. It caused 26 deaths, 17 of them in heavy, and all of them caused by floods and rain related sites. The roads are blocked, and the name they, so what they had to do was they named the storm Alpha of 2005. So officially in all the record books, you now know Alpha of 2005 has, has been retired. And 
and that's retired, and so that the name Apple can be reused again. And if the curse 